Hello viewers, we all know that central government has launched a series of schemes to uplift the downtrodden people, enhance the economy and standard of living for the farmers, women and child, senior citizens and many which I don't remember the name at all. Today we are going to discuss about the Ayushman Parad which was launched recently. Nagaland also launched along with the rest of the country on September 23, 2018. Well, the aim of the scheme is to improve access to quality health care and reduce out-of-pocket expenditure on hospitalization, thereby protecting beneficiary families belonging to poor and vulnerable sections from improvisement due to health-related expenses. Yet, many citizens in the state, especially in the rural areas, are hardly aware of any of these many schemes. Therefore, today I have two expertise with me who will be speaking on the scheme. I have Sir Mopuni Pumai, Technical Coordinator and State Health Agency from State Health Agency and Madam Alongla Ayer, Technical Coordinator from National Health Agency. Welcome to the show. We will be discussing the mission at length in a very, very elaborative manner. I will not be particular with the questions as being an expertise. I'm sure any one of you can take the questions. Welcome once again. Okay. To begin with, can we discuss on the key features of the mission, like the eligibility, uh, credi uh, el eligibility criteria, the hospital and management and all? Okay. Uh, so this scheme is envisaged as one of the biggest health care insurance by a government in, in the world. So under this scheme, a household will be eligible for about rupees 5 lakh per household per year on a family floater basis. So there is no cap on the family size or the age of the family members. So anyone in the family household can enroll for this scheme. So in Nagaland, we have identified about 1,534 health packages. This comprises of all secondary and tertiary treatments. This, uh, these treatments can be availed in all the impaneled hospitals. So under the impaneled hospitals, all government hospitals are considered as already impaneled. And private hospitals and other autonomous hospitals, they can impanel if they wish to impanel. So the country is trying to impanel as many as private hospitals as possible so that we have the private sector also under this scheme, coming under this scheme. Mm -hmm. um, in Nagaland, we have identified about 2.33 lakh households. This comprises of the uh, families which are under the RSBY 2016 enrollment. Mm -hmm. So this scheme will not be enrollment based, so we don't have any specific enrollment going on. This is an entitlement based uh, scheme where people who are eligible are already in the uh, system and they can come and see whether their name is there or not and then they can uh, avail the e-cards to avail the services under this scheme. So this okay. is one of the key features. Okay. How about uh, beneficiary identification and verification services? Okay. In yeah. please, can you? Tell us. So like uh, along just mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. if a family is eligible, then their names are already, because we have a database from the RSBY 2016 mm -hmm. and the SECC data, which uh, she already mentioned, which was uh, collected by the Rural Development in 2011. Okay. So once the family is uh, eligible, th their names are in there in the database, they can go to any of the impaneled hospitals in the state. Okay. C country and state as well, yes. Okay, okay. So uh, for now in Nagaland, we have all the district hospitals which are doing the enrollment ver verification for the mm -hmm. beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. So th this is called the BIS, the Beneficiary Identification System. Okay. So they have to go there with a valid ID card, mm -hmm. personal ID card, say Aadhaar card or your PAN card, your voter's ID. Mm -hmm. All those, uh, we have a list of IDs which are mentioned. So that is the personal identification uh, document. And then the other one is the family identification document. Okay. So in the family, we have this ration card or uh, uh, RSBY card, which okay. uh, they have the details of the family. Okay, okay. So they have to go with tho those two and then go and verify themselves uh, and uh, print, uh, get an e-card. Okay. The <coughs> scheme is based uh, for, for each household. Uh -huh. So the family ID is required so that they can prove that they are part of the same household. Mm -hmm. So the ration card generally has the list of all the family members. Mm -hmm. So that is why we require the fam uh, ration card as one of the family ID proofs. Mm -hmm. Otherwise also uh, they can bring a letter from the village panchayat or the okay. ward ward chairman mm -hmm. which uh, details the family members mm -hmm. as part of the same family. Then they can also be added, the family members can also be added for the uh, as a beneficiary okay. but under this scheme we cannot add any new households as such okay. 
So the households are already identified. We cannot mm -hmm. add new households. Mm -hmm. But within the identified households, we can add new family members. So okay. for this, the family ID is required. Okay, okay. So uh, what are the figures as on date? Uh, the figures generally, um, what the in the whole nation, the base is uh, the country has identified about 10.74 crore beneficiary base okay. who are entitled for this scheme, mm -hmm. and for Nagaland, the figure is about 2.3 lakhs beneficiary who are entitled. Okay. So they are already in the system. Okay. People have to just go and see whether they are entitled or not, and get the e-card for the benefits. So uh, nationally, the e-cards issued is about uh, 3 lakh 76. Uh, 3.76 lakhs have already been issued and in Nagaland we have issued about 2,700 e-cards already and okay. it is an ongoing process. Okay. So okay. this uh, e-card issue will be throughout the policy period. Yes. Okay. So uh, how, how many hospitals are empaneled in the state? Uh, for now we have uh, 57 hospitals which are empaneled. Okay. Out of 57, three of them are private hospitals. Uh -huh. Then we have uh, like uh, out of the 55, 54, 54 government hospitals, we have mm. the district hospitals, mm. the CHCs, and some PHCs are also mm. already empaneled. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So which are the three private hospitals that were empaneled? Uh, Faith Hospital in Dimapur, okay. then CIHSR, okay. and uh, ECS, House of Hope, Tuing Okay, okay, okay. okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, I'll come to the questions. I wanted to know the uh, current status beneficiary and uh, how many beneficiaries were identified under the scheme in Nagaland? Yeah, so uh, under the scheme uh, 2.3 lakhs is the beneficiary base that we are okay, looking okay, at. Yeah. So this is from the RSBY 2016 enrolled beneficiary households okay. and also from the SECC database of certain deprivation categories which the center has identified. So 2.3 is the state's uh, beneficiary base. Okay. So. Um, out of that one, the claims since it started in September 23rd, mm -hmm. we have already made claims to the insurance company. Okay. So in the state, we have already made uh, 26 claims, okay. which comes to about 1.75 lakhs claims already made. Okay, yes. okay. So can anyone apply for a beneficiary uh, e-card? So and uh, adding to it, is Aadhaar card mandatory for, you know, to make the yeah. e-card? Yeah, so again, uh, this is an entitlement based scheme. Mm -hmm. So anyone can go and check whether they are entitled or not. Okay. So the state cannot add new households as such. Mm -hmm. So the only thing they can do is because this is pulled directly from the SECC database and the RSBY mm -hmm. enrolled database. Mm -hmm. So they can go and check whether their name is there or not. Mm -hmm. If their name is not there, there's no way that they can add new their own name again, unless okay. they are part of a household that is already there. Okay, okay. And other it's not mandatory, okay. but Aadhaar, uh, the center has mandated it as the preferred way of authenticating the users so that we know that the correct beneficiary gets the service under this scheme. So okay. even for getting an e-card or mm. getting the service once mm -hmm. uh, for the service treatment in the hospitals, mm. Aadhaar is the preferred way of authenticating, but okay. it is not mandatory. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, are government employees entitled to get this? Mm. See, like we said before, that uh, database for the beneficiary is yes, RSBY yes. and SECC. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. if as of now, government servants as such are not entitled, but okay, okay. if their names are there, if they feature in, in the SECC, family, yeah, yeah, if, members, if they, yes. the family members, their names are there in SECC, mm -hmm. then they can go and get the e card. Okay. Uh, so in the SECC, yeah. there are uh, certain categories which the government has already defined mm -hmm. by the Central Wire of Taking Census, mm -hmm. which are called uh, deprivation categories. Okay. So you have uh, people, households which doesn't have a paka house, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. or maybe some household mm -hmm. doesn't have any male members, adult male members, or mm -hmm. maybe some households have uh, people with disabilities mm -hmm. and they don't have an adult male member, mm -hmm. or a female-headed household with no mm -hmm. adult male member. All those are considered as deprivation. Okay. Even for example, SCST households, they are okay. considered as uh, deprivation categories. So those will be automatically in the database. Okay, but okay. there are certain exclusion criteria which the center has defined again. Oh. So if you are a government employee, for example, okay. you, you will be excluded from the deprivation category. Okay. Or if you earn more than 10,000 a month, uh -huh. again, that will also exclude you from the deprivation category. Okay. So okay. all those ex exclusion criteria are applied uh -huh. before coming up with the beneficiary uh, database. Okay. So if you are a government servant, you are automatically 
excluded in the mm. system. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How has the beneficiaries been selected for, the s for this scheme and mm. what type of families are covered? Are all the, I'm not done with the question, are okay. all the BPA, BPL families and Russian guard holders are covered under these schemes? Yeah. Do you want to take mm. that? Yeah. Okay, so um, <laughs> the BPL families and uh, ration card holders, initially we spoke about the RSBY 2016 enrollment, right? So that happened based on the uh, MG Enrica card holders mm -hmm. and uh, BPL ration card holders. Okay. So if they had enrolled for the uh, RSBY 2016 during the enrollment drive that happened around 2016, mm -hmm. they, they will be included in this scheme. So we are not taking the ration card database directly, mm -hmm. but it's more indirect. So mm -hmm. RSBY, uh, ration card holders were enrolled under RSBY 2016, mm -hmm. and RSBY 2016 uh, enrolled pe households mm -hmm. are automatically pulled under the scheme. So okay. it's an uh, indirect way of uh, getting ration card holders. But sometimes what happens is even if you are a ration card holder, if mm. you didn't enroll under that RSBY 2016, mm. you may not be uh, an identified beneficiary under the scheme. Okay. Uh, how will the beneficiaries know that they are their names are enrolled? I'm repeating. Uh, and then, how how do the ben uh, beneficiaries get the e card? So uh, how do how will they know is uh, there since it's already in the database. Uh, one mm -hmm. way is the prime minister has sent out letters to all the eligible households. Okay. So it's called the PM's letter. Okay. So uh, it will go down to till the block level to the to the villages to mm -hmm. the actual beneficiary households, and they'll mm -hmm. be actually given a letter. Mm -hmm. But uh, considering the logistics, probably some families have not yet received the letter. Mm -hmm. But the letter has already been sent out to all the identified households. Okay. So okay. if they receive that letter, mm -hmm. they can go to any of the impaneled hospitals and mm -hmm. get the e-card. Okay. Uh, the other option. Um, is uh, there's a website called mera.pmjy.gov.in okay, where okay. people can actually just go enter their mobile phone number and check mm. whether their name is there or not. Okay. So that is another way of knowing. Or otherwise, anyone can just walk into any of the impaneled hospitals. Mm -hmm. There is a PMJY help desk in every impaneled hospital. Mm -hmm. They can go there. We already have uh, what we call Arogya Mitras. These are like uh, health friends mm -hmm. who will assist them in finding out whether they have uh, they're eligible for it or not mm -hmm. and if they are eligible to issue the e-card so that is the different ways of knowing whether a person okay. is uh, okay. eligible or not yeah is there any age limit mm, no th there is no age limit for this so if your name is there in the database then mm -hmm. you can go and enroll even for even a newborn baby yeah even for a newborn baby also okay so and, how uh -huh. and then uh, even like in RSBY we had uh, five members only limit, and but okay. under this scheme, we don't have any limit for the family Age. size. Number family of size. Uh, number, Mem of number of families, families, members. Family members. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's no limit. Okay, okay, okay. So how will the uh, beneficiaries avail the services out of the state when they are out of the state? Uh, we have this called national portability. So if once they are identif identified and they have a card, mm -hmm. that uh, golden card they call it. Okay. So if if you have that card, you can go to any of the impaneled hospitals in any state mm -hmm. all over the country mm -hmm. and then they can show their card or also if, if they have given the mobile number mm -hmm. with that mobile number also they can search and then uh, th th they can go and avail those services in those hospitals. Mm -hmm. So the BIS, the Beneficiary Identification System, it's mm -hmm. a national database okay. so it's not state specific mm -hmm. so even if you go once you are issued an e-card or mm -hmm. even if you are not issued an e-card you can go to any of the impaneled hospitals outside of the state and mm -hmm. then uh, from anywhere, they'll be able to check their eligibility, get their e-card issued, or avail the services from the impaneled hospitals. Yeah. Okay. So it's supposed to be seamless across the country. Okay. Okay. So how many claims have been submitted till today? Um, nationally, about 3.91 crore claims have been already made across the uh, across the nation. Uh -huh. In Nagaland, we have made about 26 <laughs> claims till date. Yes. Correct. You told me earlier. So can this service be availed in private hospitals? Yes, private hospitals can also yes. avail. If, if they are impaneled under this scheme, mm -hmm. they, ha they have to uh, ap apply for impanelment. Okay. There are certain uh, th the things which they need to submit. And then once they are impaneled, then the beneficiaries, I mean, they can start taking the beneficiaries and treat, do the treatment. treatment. Yeah. Okay. Is there any validity for this e-card? 
As of now, uh, there is no um, guidelines on how long the validity is. Mm -hmm. So the policy period as of now is for one, one year. One year yes. So okay. uh, the e card also, as of now, it's for one year. It may be extended. Mm -hmm. or we are looking at the one year period as of now. Okay, okay. So does the beneficiary has to uh, pay any uh, nominal fee when they get registered in the hospital for treatment? No, no. no. <coughs> the, uh, for now, it, everything is free under this. Say okay. like in RSBY, for getting a card, you mm. are supposed to pay 30 rupees. Mm -hmm. But under this scheme, they don't have to pay any money. So it's okay. all free, of course. It's for the beneficiary, it's supposed to be totally cashless, cashless. and paperless. Yeah. Okay. So they don't have to, of course, they have to produce their um, photo ID cards mm -hmm. just to validate their identity. Mm. Otherwise, it's supposed to be paperless and cashless. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so even if you lose your e-card also, mm. you can still go back and okay. see, you know, get a new e-card printed out because it will already be in the system. Oh, that you're yes. yes, okay, okay. So what kind of treatment uh, are covered under the schemes? So it's uh, all the secondary and tertiary treatments are covered under most of the uh, tertiary treatment mm -hmm. and all secondary treatments are covered under the scheme, yeah. Okay, uh, in figure, do you remember any, the number of uh, illness that is covered yeah. under the scheme? As, uh, as per the ministries, uh, ministries package list, I mean mm -hmm. the, the treatment list, Mm. There are around 1,350 uh, tr treatment packages. Okay. But the, the state, our state has uh, requested for more uh, packages. So at okay. present, we have around 1,534. Okay, that is beyond the. Yes, yes more, more than, more than, than the national. national, national, yes. national yes. Yes. Okay. Our but if you go out of the state, yes. huh. you can, uh, for example, I get sick and I go out of the state. Mm. So since my name will be in Nagaland, right? Yes. So uh, I cannot avail the state-specific packages outside okay. of my state. Mm. Okay. So okay. only the national list, which is 1,300 something, mm -hmm. only those packages will be available across the state, across the nation, mm -hmm. and the state-specific ones will be available only in Nagaland. Okay. So. Okay. So are pre-existing diseases covered under this scheme? Yes. yes all pre-existing diseases are also okay. covered. Okay. Then is there any limit uh, to a number of families who can avail the service as in the uh, as in previous RSBY we call a scheme which had a cap of five members per household? As I mentioned before, ah. we, there is no limit for uh, family members. I mean, the benefit, mm -hmm. beneficiary limit, yes. You can have 10 or more also, but you, ha you have to establish, uh, you have to have the document showing that you are yeah. related to that family. Yeah, this is especially, I think in Nagaland probably it may not be so relevant, but in other places where you have joint families mm -hmm. and they uh, and they always register as a single household, mm -hmm. so it can be even 100 and above also, okay. they can still uh, avail the services. There's no cap at all, however mm -hmm. many number of family members that you have. The only thing that is required is you need to prove that you are part of that household. Mm -hmm. That is the only thing. Where that ration card and that panchayat letter mm -hmm. comes into play. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, do you question does a state health agency uh, come across any issues while trying to while implementing this scheme yeah, actually since uh, it's the first i mean we, we are implementing implementing it for the first time we face hmm. a lot of issues so because uh, first thing is like the database hmm. i mean the, the database is uh, not very proper i mean as you know there are lots of uh, gaps okay. while collecting okay. the data from uh, both the ends i mean when when you mentioned about RSBY also, mm -hmm. because RSBY was taken from uh, MGNRG and then the food and civil supplies, that uh, BPL mm -hmm. it, uh, data. Okay. So first is that the correctness of the data, because oh, there are lots okay. of mismatches, mm -hmm. some spelling wrong, uh, like the spellings, then some, some cases we have uh, mm -hmm. age, yes. date of birth. Mm -hmm. So the one they give in the SEC during the enumeration, mm -hmm. that uh, census enumeration, they give uh, different, mm -hmm. and then when they make a uh, Aadhaar card, it, it is different. So those yes. those are those are some of the uh, challenge. I mean, difficulties, uh, difficulties that uh -huh. we face then, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and also when we, when we look at the identifying these uh, beneficiaries, mm -hmm. since it's all online based, yes. so whether it's a hospital entanglement, whether it's uh, making a card whether the beneficiaries are coming to make a card, hmm. we need internet service. So okay. uh, without uh, proper internet connectivity, hmm. uh, it's it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. And then even for this uh, treatment also, s 
under the for the government hospitals mm. they are quite okay with the package rate i mean the rate which the ministry has given okay but for the private hospitals mm. uh, the rate is m quite less okay so if they take they want to help the poor people i mean they want to be come under this scheme mm. but uh, since the, the package rate is very less so mm -hmm. in a way they are losing out and as you know most of uh, the patients or those who get sick mm. they go to private hospitals, private hospitals yes. and so that's why uh, even if some beneficiaries they have a card mm. they are not mm. able to avail the services okay so and then yeah there are more i mean as we go move along there will be i'm sure there will be more challenges again mm -hmm. <laughs> i hope so so how many districts uh, have been implemented uh, so far uh, so we have covered all the districts in nagaland in so nagaland, all yes. 11 districts are on board okay yes so all district hospitals are already empaneled mm -hmm. and uh, just to bring the service closer to the beneficiaries we are go going down to the level of the chc's community health centers okay, okay. and we are also trying to identify functional uh, primary health care centers mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that they can also come on board because um, one is the uh, treatment itself mm -hmm. the other thing is uh, only when you go down to the chc and phcs mm -hmm. the beneficiaries in those area will know about the scheme and also get their e-cards ready mm -hmm. yes. so we are trying to go down to the phc level Okay, yeah, so also in all the districts. So, uh, since it's almost covered in all the in in our state in mm -hmm. all the districts, uh, how is it functioning? Uh, functioning, it's picking up slowly. You know, okay. the e cards okay. are also going on slowly. Yes. Like and like he mentioned, mm -hmm. we have certain issues, especially with the connectivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Connectivity is a major problem in Nagaland. So yes. we are having similar issues even in the district headquarters. So going down to the CHCs, we will need to strengthen that part if mm -hmm. we want to run the scheme smoothly. Okay. And of course, uh, insurance is very new in Nagaland. Mm -hmm. So we have yes. to do a lot of uh, you know, IEC information, education, communication sure. to all the beneficiaries so that they get to know the service and also so that they are not misinformed about the scheme mm -hmm. because some people have misperceptions about the scheme that they'll get money in their hands. Mm -hmm. But this is not about giving out money. This is about covering their hospital expenses. Mm -hmm. So we need to do, we need to, we are continuing with that one and awesome. we'll continue to do that one so that, you know, <laughs> okay. more people get to know about the scheme as mm -hmm. well as get the correct information. Yeah. Okay, ma'am, I don't want to end this, uh, our conversation, our discussion. Mm -hmm. How do you intend to take this scheme forward uh, so that the needy people are reached? Yes, so uh, like we mentioned earlier, we need to take it down till the CHC and PHC levels mm. so that the needy, because this will, all the most of the BPL families, of course, we have them in the urban areas also, but mm -hmm. they will be in the remote areas. Mm. So until we go down to the PHC and CHC mm. level, they will not be aware of the services. Mm, yes. So we need to take it down till that level. We are identifying BHCs which can come on board of this one. Mm -hmm. And also, we are also uh, extensively training the Arogya Mitras. They are okay. called the PMs Arugya Mitras so that they can take it, uh, inform all the uh, beneficiaries in the villages. Mm -hmm. Also, we have uh, roped in, not only in Nagaland, but this is nationally, we mm -hmm. have something called the Common Service Centers yes. under the Ministry of IT. Mm -hmm. So they are already roped in. Okay. So in Nagaland, we have about 200 functional communities uh, uh, service centers. centers. Okay. So they will be going down till the block levels and wherever we have those village level entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, to issue these e-cards to okay. the beneficiaries. Okay. So th that will be very helpful. Uh, they And the MOU has already been signed at the center and the states are already getting on board. Nagaland has also started the process. Okay. They are yet to issue the e-cards but very mm -hmm. soon we are hoping that they will start issuing e-cards for okay. the scheme. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, Sir Mubni and uh, Madam Alongla. That was an in-depth insight of the policy to be implemented in the state and across the country. Viewers, thank you for watching this show. And whoever are watching, may kindly spread this message. Make each and every citizens of the scheme know, let the people know uh, about the scheme so that they are not deprived of these facilities and make sure that no one dies because they are because of being unable to pay medical expenses. I'm very confident that these schemes will benefit our people in a bigger way, lightening the burden of many people, especially in the rural areas from economically poor background. Thank you, Sen uh, Ngobni and Madam Alonga once again.